Hello, my name is Paulina Majewska and I'm a Foundation Year One doctor in North East Thames. Mr. Patrick Grove, who co-authored this presentation, is a neurosurgical registrar in North Thames. In this presentation, we will talk about craniofacial neuropathic pain syndromes in neurosurgery. We will focus on trigeminal neuralgia because it is, the, it is the most common craniofacial syndrome treated by neurosurgeons, but we will also touch upon supraorbital neuralgia, glossopharyngeal neuralgia, geniculate neuralgia, postherpetic neuralgia syndrome, cluster headache, and other trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. Trigeminal neuralgia most commonly affects patients in their 50s and 60s, and the annual incidence of this condition in the UK has been reported to be 27 new cases per 100,000. Females are almost two times more commonly affected than males. The etiology of the condition varies. The most common reason for the neuralgia is compression of the trigeminal nerve at root entry zone by the superior cerebral artery. Other causes include posterior fossa chimes and multiple sclerosis plaque within brainstem. Trigeminal neuralgia presents as pain with typical characteristics. We can describe the pain following a well-known among medical students and doctors mnemonic, Socrates. As for sight, the pain occurs in distribution of one or more branches of trigeminal nerve, which will were shown in the diagram in the previous slide, and is almost always unilateral. 3-5% to 5 of patients suffer from bilateral pains, but they very rarely occur simultaneously, or for onset. The pain starts all of a sudden, and the frequency of onset varies from a few to hundreds of attacks per day. C for character. The pain is stabbing in character, and patients sometimes describe it as an electric shock traveling across their face. R for radiation. The pain rarely radiates. A for association. Apart from the pain, patients sometimes complain of tingling or numbness of the same area. T for time course. The pain is recurrent. It occurs in paroxysms lasting from seconds to minutes. The periods of remission range from months to years, and they tend to shorten with time. E for exacerbating factors. They include touching the face, eating, cold winds, vibrations, shaving or brushing teeth. S for severity. The pain is usually excruciating. It is very important to remember that neurological examination should be normal in trigeminal neuralgia and if the patient shows neurological signs, it is a red flag and the cause should be carefully investigated. Differential diagnosis for symptoms of trigeminal neuralgia include dental pathology, temporomandibular joint dysfunction, migraine, giant cell arthritis or cluster headache. Trigeminal neuralgia is a clinical diagnosis, however many patients undergo brain MRI mainly to rule out other diagnoses or investigate the underlying cause for the conditions, such as plaques of demyelination in multiple sclerosis, lacunar infarctions or various cerebellopontine angle masses. The management of trigeminal neuralgia include conservative, medical and surgical treatments. Conservative management includes patient's reassurance but also triggers avoidance education. Carbamazepine is the most effective medical treatment available. However, there are other medical therapies used such as oxcarbamazepine, baclofen, gabapentin, lamotrigine or botulinum toxin. The surgical treatment is reserved for patients with symptoms refractory to medical treatments or in cases when side effects of medical treatments outweigh their benefits. There is a range of surgical techniques available, such as rhizotomy using glycerol, compression or radiofrequency. All of these techniques alleviate pain by causing injury to the trigeminal nerve root. The procedures are relatively safe, however the pain often reoccurs 
and the procedure itself is destructive, leading to side effects such as numbness, including risk of corneal numbness, which might require long, lifelong eye protection and lubrication. Stereotactic radiosurgery is another surgical treatment option. However, it is usually less effective and is also destructive in nature. The most common surgical treatment nowadays is microvascular decompression due to its highest response rate and lowest rate of side effects such as facial numbness. It involves trigeminal nerve root exploration via a posterior fossa craniectomy and displacement of a vessel impinging the nerve. This method is highly successful with 90% of patients obtaining significant pain relief and 80% of patients staying pain-free at one year after the surgery. The drawbacks of this treatment are rare, but serious complications such as cerebrovascular events, meningitis, deafness, cranial nerve pauses, or even death. Moreover, patients with multiple sclerosis as the underlying cause of trigeminal neuralgia are not considered for this operation due to the poor response rate. Supraorbital neuralgia is a pain syndrome affecting supraorbital branch of frontal nerve, which is a branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. This condition presents as unilateral pain in distribution of supraorbital nerve, which is marked in green in the diagram presented. The syndrome is either chronic continuous or remitting intermittent in character. It can be primary, that is the cause of the pain is unknown, or secondary, due to trauma or chronic pressure to the supraorbital nerve leading to its injury. The management of the condition can be medical or surgical. Medical treatments include gabapentin, pregabalin or topical capsaicin. Surgical treatment involves either rhizotomy with alcohol or radiofrequency ablation or nerve decompression. Glossopharyngeal neuralgia presents as severe pain in the distribution of glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves that is mainly affecting throat and the base of the tongue. The pain can radiate to the ipsilateral ear or neck. It can be associated with salivation, coughing, hypotension, syncope or cardiac arrest and is triggered by swallowing, talking and chewing. The condition responds poorly to medical therapy due to the pain severity and the main mode of treatment is microvascular decompression. Geniculate neuralgia is a pain syndrome affecting nervous intermediates, which is a somatic sensory branch of facial nerve innervating mechanoreceptors of hair follicles on inner pinna, nose and mouth, and chemoreceptors of taste buds on anterior two-thirds of the tongue. The condition presents with unilateral paroxysmal otalgia, which radiates to pinna. It is associated with burning sensation around ipsilateral eye and cheek, prosopalgia, which means pain in orbit, nose and palate, salivation, bitter taste, tinnitus and vertigo. The pain can be triggered by cold, noise, or swallowing. Geniculate neuralgia is usually investigated with audiometry, electronystagmogram, MRI brain, and sometimes cerebral angiography to exclude a cerebral aneurysm compressing nervous intermediates. Management of the condition can be medical with carbamazepine, phenytoin, and sodium valproate, or surgical with microvascular decompression with division of nervous intermediates. Postherpetic neuralgia is a pain syndrome caused by varicella zoster virus infection. The virus can be dormant in the dorsal root ganglia of the spine or trigeminal ganglion and erupts when the immune system of an individual is weakened. The infection causes inflammatory response within the nerve, leading to its fibrosis and chronic pain. Postherpetic neuralgia, rather than acute herpetic infection, can be diagnosed when pain persists for at least a month after varicella zoster virus vesicular cutaneous eruptions have healed. The pain is consistent and burning or aching in character. It can occur simultaneously or can be triggered by touch. It can affect many Dermatome. 
However, most commonly affected dermatomes are thorax or face dermatomes, less commonly limbs dermatomes. The pain can be relieved by constant pressure and is sometimes associated with paresthesia. Management of the condition varies. Medical treatments include gabapentin, oxcarbamazepine, amitriptyline, topical treatments such as capsaicin or lidocaine patch, and intrathecal steroids. Surgical management can involve chordotomy, rhizotomy, neurectomy, sympathectomy, dorsal root and rhizon lesioning, or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. Cluster headache is a unilateral severe pain syndrome which, sometimes which is sometimes compared by patients to a knife being driven in through a point between the outer canthus of the eye and the hairline. It lasts between 15 minutes to 3 hours and reoccurs at least once every other day and up to 8 times a day. It is usually associated with nausea, restlessness and ipsilateral cranial autonomic symptoms symptoms such as lacrimation, rhinorrhea, ptosis, meiosis, eyelid, eyelid swelling, facial sweating or conjunctival injection. The condition has episodic character that means headache periods can last from two weeks to three months and are separated by at least one month of remission. The pathophysiology of the condition is not well understood, however the recent hypothesis is that the pain is caused by abnormal activity of posterior inferior hypothalamic grey matter. Historically, management was mainly medical, including tryptins, inhalation of 100% oxygen, topical lignocaine, ergotamine, as well as preventative treatments, for example verapamil or lithium. However, patients suffering from chronic unilateral cluster headaches for at least two years uh, with daily attacks which are refractory to medical treatment can be offered surgical treatment. There are two types of surgical management of those patients. First involves destructive neurosurgical ablation with glycerol injection, radiofrequency or radiosurgery. Second option is more novel surgery that involves neuromodulation, that is deep brain stimulation or occipital nerve stimulation. Last but not least, we'll talk about trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. It is a group of primary headache disorders characterized by unilateral trigeminal distribution pain that is associated with prominent ipsilateral cranial autonomic features including conjunctival injection, lacrimation, nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, ptosis or eyelid edema. The group of conditions includes cluster headache which was described before, paroxysmal hemicrania, and SANCT syndrome, which stands for short-lasting unilateral neuralgiform headache attacks with conjunctival injection and tearing. Paroxysmal hemicrania presents with unilateral brief excruciating headaches with cranial autonomic features. Presentation can be very similar to cluster headache, however in comparison to cluster headache, paroxysmal hemicrania pain occurs more frequently and the duration of attacks is shorter. It also, unlike cluster headache, responds very well to indomethacin. Sankt syndrome presents with brief duration of pain attacks, lasting from 5 to 250 seconds. The pain is in ophthalmic distribution of trigeminal nerve and is associated with prominent conjunctival injection and lacrimation. The condition, unlike trigeminal neuralgia, responds to carbamazepine only partially. The most commonly used treatment for Sankt syndrome is lamotrigine. In summary, in this presentation, we have spoken about trigeminal, supraorbital, glossopharyngeal, geniculate and postherpetic neuralgia, cluster headache and other trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. They are the most common craniofacial pain syndromes managed by neurosurgeons. They present with characteristic pain with specific distribution and therefore the diagnosis is clinical, but patients are often investigated to exclude other diagnosis. The management of these conditions include conservative, medical and surgical options.
These are the references used in preparation of this presentation. Thank you.